All right, from carving uh, turkey to maybe slicing and dicing up an onion, uh, knowing which knife to use is really essential to kitchen safety. I recently had a chance to talk with registered dietitian and our friend Holly Granger uh, to show us some of the basics in kitchen know-how. Take a look. Holly, I am so excited to see you. Okay, truth be told, my husband gets worried about me around the knives in the kitchen. So I'm Hilarious. so glad, A, that he's not here, but B, that you're gonna get me ready to know how to use these. It looks like you pulled them all out. Well, I think the most important thing, yes, I love the knife box. A lot of people always wonder, you know, what knives do I need? What are the best knives? For someone that spends a lot of time in the kitchen, Sometimes you may want a few extras. Maybe it's just because I'm not doing the dishes and I need another one, to, you know, another clean one. But the key is there are four key essential knives that everyone should have in their home. So the first knife, and I can see some different varieties in your block and there on your table is your chef knife. Now, your chef knife is a great all-purpose knife. This one's actually a 10-inch, which for most home cooks is a little bit long. I would say the average home cook has something like an eight inch, like this one. Right. So you want to go for one that has a good feel. I like this one because it's lighter, but it also has a little bit of weight. So when I'm chopping, I can put that pressure down and you want to use your chef knife for doing things like you can rock it, but you want to use it to cut harder foods. Now, at the opposite side of a chef knife is what's called a paring knife. So I love a little paring knife. I actually... My paring knife actually just kind of broke. Is it. this mine? Yucky. Yes, it's like a small one. It's about a, probably a three or four inch blade. What these are good for is they're really nice for when you're doing things that are tender or smaller. Holly, it seems like you might have more control, obviously, especially when you're doing more of the delicate things like a tomato or like your garlic. Exactly. exactly. So like if I'm having cherry or grape tomatoes, I'm using my paring knife. So something small that when you're right in there. Now, right. kind of the cross between your paring knife and your chef knife is what's called your utility knife. So this one looks like this, and it's long like a chef knife, but it has a smaller blade like your paring knife. Oh. Yeah, so this is kind of the knife of all trades. So it's long, but it's thin. And what's key for this is using it for things that Maybe you don't want to pull out your big chef knife or you don't need that heavy, you know, the heaviness of it, but you can do something like slice a tomato. Sometimes this is known as a tomato knife. You want it nice and sharp and you can just slice just like this, whether you're cutting a sandwich or your tomato, you get a nice slice. Beautiful. You, you have more length than you do with your paring knife, but it's not so big and bulky. Okay. Now, the last knife that I recommend, and I think you might have just pulled it out, is what's known as a serrated knife. So you can oh, see yeah. serrated, which is often known as a bread knife. It's right. great for using it for something like that would require a sawing motion. So let's say I'm sawing this back and forth, and it cuts, it works well for a tomato, but it cuts something like bread. Right. or waxy vegetables like a bell pepper or a waxy piece of fruit like an apple. It cuts that so much better and you get that nice cut without smashing it down. Without messing up, you know, your, your bread or whatever it is that you're, you're eating. All right, Holly, I like that you're talking about um, quality. And obviously, if we're going to spend money on quality, we want to make sure that they're staying nice and sharp. So what do we need to sharpen? Well, I love using either a sharpener. This is just a basic sharpener that you can get at any type of cooking store. And I also have what's called a honing rod. You might also see it called a steel rod. There's a lot of different names for it. And so if you want to sharpen first, that's something I do maybe once a week, once a month, where honing is something that I would do, let's say, every single time before I cook. So you can take, I like to just put it on a towel, and then you want to take your knife kind of at a 15 degree angle and you start from the back here of your knife and you just run it forward on both sides. Right. So most, most of the stainless steel knives, you just, yep, you just pull it right towards you. And that really helps to help refine and sharpen up that blade. You know, your knife is sharp when you can take a piece of paper 
and slice right through it. We were playing with this at home. I, I, I really was like, what? So you want to be able to just slice right through that. The sharper your knife is, the less likely you are to be injured. Because if your knife isn't sharp, you got to think you're trying right. hard. And it's more likely that you will slip or the food will slip. So if your knife is nice and sharp and you just have to make those, you know, key quality gentle cuts, it'll go right through and you're less likely to injure yourself. Holly, this is so great. Such great advice. Maybe I will be allowed uh, to use the knives after this wonderful lesson. I'm kidding, but yeah, he's always like, be careful. But thank you it. so much for your time. Great tips and advice. Where can people go to follow you? All of the information and the different knives that I'm recommending are on hollygranger.com. So they'll all be there for your readers. And I have some of my favorites. And of course, I'll spell out each of these different ones and, and share all that we talked about today. Thank you so much. It was great to see you. Good luck in the kitchen. Thank yes. you. Now you have to do your trick no, tonight. That. There you go. Okay. This needs to be sharpened, and I think I better leave that to Jim. Did you see Kate wander in and look concerned? I'm telling you, she and I are the klutzy ones of the family. All right, somebody take this knife away. But not you, Kate.